क्लास सेवन वेलकम बैक टू आर इंग्लिश क्लास सो आई होप यू हैड ऑल डन योर क्वार्टली एग्जाम्स वेल सो नाउ लेट्स गेट स्टार्टड विद आर न्यू लेसन बिफोर गोइंग ऑन टू आर क्लास आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू लिसन टू द अवेरनेस ऑन पेट्स राइट सो हाउ मनी ऑफ यू लाइक पेट्स I'm sure many of you would like pet right but how many of you really have one many of us like pets but our parents never allow us to have them right we might have a dog or a cat at home many of us might have a fish at home and rarely i've seen also people having parrot but students few kind information you cannot have parrots as pets at home it's against our law so just be careful rarely i've also seen people having guinea pigs at home i've seen people having rabbits like we saw in our poem about the tiger scratching the tiger's back there are also people who have tigers and lion as their pet animals while some of them have cuckoos and crows many of them also take care of little squirrels and i've also seen people having mynas and many other birds at home these are all rare pets that people have at home right um many of you might have guessed the topic right now yes In today's class we are going to look about a pet hornbill that a narrator had when he was young so the topic of today's class is Harold our hornbill so many of you might be wondering what's a hornbill hornbill is nothing but it's also a kind of a bird so it looks like the bird which you see in the picture so the story is all about this hornbill who is called harald so we are going to see about harald and his parents then we are going to see about an incident that harald met in his life then we'll be looking at how harald reached a narrator's hands and the relationship between harald and his new family members then we'll also be looking about harald and his likes his dislikes his habits and everything about harald and finally we'll be looking at the narrator so let's get started harald's mother like all good hornbills was a most careful of wives His father was most easy going of husbands. In January long before the flame tree flowered, Harold's father took his wife into a great hole high in the tree trunk. In this weak weather beaten hollow, Harold's mother was enclosed within the hole by a sturdy wall of earth, sticks and dung. Harold's father left a small hole in the center of this wall to enable him to communicate with his wife. whenever he felt like chat walled up in her uncomfortable room harold's mother was a prisoner for over 2 months during this period an egg was laid and harold was born so here we get to know about harold's parents so harold's parents were living in a tree called a flame tree so harold's mother was inside the tree for almost a period of 2 months and within these 2 months she laid one egg and that's how harold came into this world so this picture you see is the flame tree so even before it blossomed that is even before this little flowers came up harold's mother and father came into this tree and we see that when harald's mother was inside and the hole was fully closed by the sticks and the dirt of the earth harald's mother was inside the hole and 
his father stayed outside so that is how later harold came in in his naked boyhood harold was no beauty and his promising feature was his flaming red bill that is his beak matching the blossoms of the flame tree which was now a blaze heralding the summer that is was it was full of blossoms like you saw in the before picture he had a stomach that could never be filled despite despite the best efforts of his parents who brought him pieces of jackfruit and berries from the banyan tree so like all small kids harold was also hungry all the time so you see in the picture right he had this bill that is his beak which was colorful but his body was naked that is he had no feathers in his early age and inside the hole he was along with his mom and his father tried his best to bring berries and other jackfruit from the banyan tree to feed harold but in vain harold was always hungry moving on As he grew bigger the room became more cramped and one day his mother burst through the wall spread out her wings and sailed over the tree tops her husband was so glad to see her he played with her expressing his delight deep gurgles throat chuckles then they repaired the wall of the nursery nursery is nothing but the place harold lived up so harold would not fall out so harold was quite happy and he did not want to come out then something happened so here comes the incident so we came to know that as harold grew up his mother felt very uncomfortable staying inside so she comes out of the hole and she's with harold's father all the time now our little harold is inside the hole and his parents are pampering him from the outside so they make sure harold feels comfortable inside the wall so now let's see what's the incident that happens for harold one afternoon he was awakened from his sleep by a loud thumping that is a uh, hit on the wall so the sound made by his parents were also different soon the wall gave away and there was something large and yellow and furry staring at his not his parents bills but the hungry eyes of a civet cat before harold could be seized his parents flew at the cat both roaring lustily and striking out with their great bills in the and sewing milly harold trembled out of his nest and landed on our garden path so what happens here is one day while harold was sleeping a civet cat comes in and usually harold was an introduced to this so harold is very much scared but Harold's father and his mother doesn't want the cat to hurt Harold so they try their best to go and poke at the cat but in vain while all this fighting is happening between the cat and Harold's parents unfortunately Harold falls down to the ground so a civet cat is nothing but a tree animal it's not a normal cat it's a tree animal and it looks like this so we see harold on the garden path before the cat or any predator could get him here harold uh, the grandfather of a narrator finds harold and he picks up harold so since they had a sanctuary at their own home narrator's grandfather brings harold to their home harold 
had lost some wing feathers and he looked very weak so they had made an enclosure for him in the front veranda and the narrator and his grandfather has taken up the duties of Harold's parents that is they cleaned up Harold they fed Harold and they took care of Harold very well because he was in a very serious condition as he had fallen down from the tree hole so Harold had a simple outlook so he didn't look very beautiful but he was very simple and after a few days he got over the shock and he was little fine and while the narrator and his grandfather came in to the veranda Harold was able to identify them because they were the ones who brought food for Harold so the Harold always greeted them with a craning neck that is he lifted up his neck and he started giving the sound as ka ka ke and when he did that harold's caretakers that is a narrator and his grandfather used to feed him with fruit insect and animal food like the little insects then they also gave him green leaves so this is how Harold's caretakers that is a narrator and his grandfather took care of Harold so later after few days when Harold was a little fine the narrator and his grandfather opened the enclosure that is they had closed the veranda before now they had opened it and they wanted Harold to make few efforts but Harold never did efforts to fly away instead he wanted to stay there comfortably inside the veranda one afternoon a veranda tea party was suddenly and alarmingly convulsed by a flash of black and white and noisy flapping so what happens here is one day they had a tea party in the veranda and suddenly something just disturbed the tea party and it was nothing but harold so with his black and white feathers he just came in and he disturbed the tea party because he wanted a loaf of bread so for this loaf of bread he just came in to the tea party and he disturbed everyone then after getting the loaf he goes back to his own place to the ceiling and he starts having it harold was not beautiful he didn't look beautiful his body was small but he had a large head but he was good natured and friendly and his relationship with the household members was very good and here in this passage you come to know that harold lived with a narrator for 12 long years we might have a pet for one year or two year but harold has lived with narrator for 12 years harold's best friends were those who fed him he was willing to even share his food sometimes he also tried to feed the foot with his great beak while i turned down his offers of beetles and similar delicacies i did occasionally share a banana with him eating was a serious business for harold and if there was any delay in meal times he would summon me with a rashious barks and vigorous bangs of his bill on the woodwork of the kitchen window so what do we get to know here Harold also loved food like all of us love food Harold also loved food and when there was a delay in the food time he used to give strange noises and he pecked the kitchen window and Harold was very good and he loved sharing his food 
So here we saw that our narrator and Harold shared bananas often time. Harold gave much time and thought to his personal appearance. So he always gave a little thought to his personal appearance and he did his routine correctly and he always followed a routine for himself starting from his morning toiletries till his habits and doing this was his habit so he tried rubbing few more colors to his feathers but in vain when the author kept his hands on Harold all the color came with the author's hand Harold would toy with anything bright or glittering often swallowing it afterwards he loved bananas and dates and balls of boiled rice i throw him the rice balls and he would catch them in the beak toss them in the air and let them drop into his open mouth he perfected the trick of catching things and in time i taught him to catch a tennis ball thrown with some force from a distance of 15 yards so here we come to see that harold loved the glittering and bright things so he loved not only to play with them but he also ate them after playing so he loved dates and boiled rice so here we all see that harold had a trick that is he caught them with his beak and he threw them up in the air and then he swallowed them so later he also learned to catch tennis ball from few miles away so this is how otto a narrator and harold started building a relationship although harold never seemed to drink any water he loved rain so when rain came in harold was chuckling and he came to know about it before and hard so like we have heard that animals and birds know if it's going to rain harold also used to start chuckling and har before it starts raining and this made aunt ruby very disappointing and she's irritated because every time she left the home harold would be chuckling and when she returned she used to be so wet and this brought in laughter for a harold so he was very naughty as storm clouds would gather and gusts of wind would shake the banana trees harold would get very excited and his chuckle would change into eerie whistle like we we he would scream and then when the first drop of rain hits the veranda and the scent of fresh earth passed he would start roaring with pleasure that is harold's love for rain and nature is expressed here the wind would carry the rain into the veranda and harold would spread out his wings and dance stumbling about like a circus clown my grandparents and i would come out on the veranda and share his happiness so all of them as a family used to enjoy rain and they were all happy about rain many years later i still miss harold's raucous bark and the banging of his great bell if there is a heaven for good horn bills i sincerely hope he is getting all the summer showers he could wish for and plenty of tennis balls to catch so here 
we get to know that our hero that is Harold the Hornbill is no more. So after many years our narrator is looking back at his hornbill and he has written the story and he also says that Harold would be in heaven if there was such thing for hornbills and he would be happy with rain showers and tennis balls. So you might be wondering who is this lucky narrator right? So the lucky narrator is none other than Ruskin Bond. So Ruskin Bond was born on 19 May 1934 and he is still alive. He is 86 years old now. He is an Indian author of British descent. He is best known and widely read author. He started writing at an early age that is 17 years due to the situations around him. So due to the family problems that he faced, he started writing short stories and newspaper articles from his young age and that's how he has come to this position. So he has written sh stories that reflect life in the hill station of Himalayas as he spent most of his childhood there. His short stories are always loved by children and the Indian Council for Child Education has recognized his role in the growth of chi children's literature in India. So every child who reads his short stories would love them. And he has also won a lot of awards. He is considered himself as a visual writer. Even in our short story that we saw about Harold, we would have seen the narrator. He would have visualized about Harold, right? He says that Harold loved rain, how he used to make sounds. Then we saw how Harold ate his food how Harold played everything while we read it was more of an imagination like we could visual it in our mind so he was considered as a visual writer his autobiographical work were rain in mountains which talked about his early age and scenes from a writer's life and this talked about his later age so that's all about our author. So now I would like to recollect the whole lesson to you in short. So Harold's mother and father lived in a flame tree and they got in there in the month of January. Then Harold's mother laid one egg and Harold came in. Due to an incident, Harold fell down from the tree and was taken by our narrator that is Raskin Bond's grandfather. Then we see that the grandfather takes him to their sanctuary that is in their veranda and they enclose him inside the veranda. Then Raskin Bond and his Grandfather feeds Harold and takes care of him. And we came to know that Harold has been with our narrator for 12 long years. And in this story, our narrator has looked back at Harold, how he used to play with our narrator and has told us about how Harold loved the rain and how much a beautiful relationship Harold shared with Ruskin Bond's family members. So that was all 
about our lesson on Harold. So we learnt about Harold and his parents, the incident that changed Harold's life, about his relationship with our narrator's family, about his habits and his likes. Finally, we also looked at our narrator, Ruskin Bond. So I hope you like this lesson a lot and I would ask you to rather love the birds and animals around you more and more and to never harm them. So as a homework, I would like you all to sketch down a mind map in your classworks and submit it in our GCR. So that's all for today's class students. Thank you. Take care until we meet in our next class.